Hello and welcome to this, the 15th lecture in this series on basic masonry construction. This lecture will look at cavity wall insulation. All new buildings are required to meet improved standards of thermal efficiency, and to achieve this, they need to incorporate significant amounts of insulation. As we've seen from previous lectures on timber framing, the space between studs tends to be used for the placement of insulation. Cavity walls don't have framing, so different solutions need to be found. The Scottish building regulations allow for three main placements of insulation when it comes to cavity walls. Internal insulation, full fill insulation, and partial fill insulation. Students should read the guidance notes within the technical standards for guidance on where each type might be best used. In addition, the technical standards also require that insulation placed within a cavity meets the appropriate levels of combustibility. So we're going to look at four main types of insulation placement, three that are covered by the building regulations and one which isn't. The first option is the partial fill solution. This can only really be achieved in new build situations as it requires boards to be installed against the face of the inner masonry leaf. Insulation boards are held back in place by retaining discs, which are clipped onto the wall ties. Care must be taken when creating a wall of this type as boards can become dislodged during construction. It's important to choose the correct wall tie for this situation as it not only needs to perform a structural role, but also needs to accommodate the retaining clips. The second option, again most usually found in new build construction, is a full fill cavity. In this option, the space between the two leaves of masonry is completely filled with insulation material. Wall ties are bedded in the masonry on each side of the wall, as per a normal cavity wall, and they pass through the insulation. There's no need for retaining clips in a fully filled cavity, as the insulation does not need to be held back. A fully filled cavity may also com compromise the performance of a wall. In areas which exposure to rain is high, a 50mm cavity will likely provide the better level of protection against water ingress. But care needs to be taken when specifying insulation for a fully filled cavity, as not all manufacturers will allow their product to be installed in this manner. One popular brand of insulation requires a residual cavity of 10mm, which may or may not be acceptable to your local building control department. Mineral wool is commonly used for fully filled cavity walls as it can be treated to make it resistant to moisture and it's non-combustible. As mentioned at the start of this lecture, increasing amounts of insulation are being installed into walls. In practice, this means that the space between leaves of masonry is also increasing, which in turn requires longer and more complex wall ties to allow the leaves to be joined together. It's also possible to inject insulation material into the cavity after the wall has been built. This can be foam, such as polyurethane, or fibre material based on mineral wool. This is possible for new build and refurbishment projects. There are some concerns, however, which are raised by this route. As the wall is complete, it is difficult to know whether any areas have been missed. It's also possible that insulation can slump after installation, which would cause cold spots in the wall. The third option for insulation placement is to install framing inside the wall and use the space between the studs as a void for insulation. This is similar to the way that timber frame might be constructed. It is probably most suitable for refurbishment projects where injection is not desirable. The final option, also probably more suitable for refurbishment, is external wall insulation. A standard cavity wall can be improved by installing rigid insulation to the outside face of the wall and then covering this with a render, tile or brick slip finish. Slabs of insulation are installed using hammer-in retaining bolts which have a wide washer on the face to grip the insulation material. Currently in the UK this option is quite expensive but it's popular in Europe and will no doubt increase in popularity over time. So in conclusion, the way that insulation can be installed to a cavity wall depends on whether it's a new build or refurbishment project. There are four main methods of placing insulation. The cavity is a convenient place for insulation, but removing the cavity does remove some of the protection against weather that it provides. So aspects which you should take from this lecture are 
that insulation installed between leaves of masonry can be full or partial fill. That if installed internally, insulation would likely require some additional framing. And that external insulation is fixed back to the wall and needs to be protected from impact and weather. Thank you very much for listening. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.